In this video, we're going to be looking at a problem where we compute average rate of change and interpret the average rate of change, but also compare some instantaneous rate of changes with average rate of changes, and also look at how that instantaneous rate of change is changing. That sounds like a mouthful, but it'll make sense as we do go through it. So let's first read this um, the description. It says the following graph shows the home price index chart emailed to Marjorie Duffin by a real estate broker. So we have the home price index, um, the vertical axis, the independent the dependent variable rep is represented by P of T, and the horizontal axis, our x axis is our T, and this is our independent variable. Now notice that 2004 correlates with year 0, 2006, I'm sorry, 2010 is year 6, and 2014 is year 10. So in part A, they ask us to compute the average rate of change of in the index over the 10-year period beginning in 2004. So we need to find an average rate of change. So in order to do that, let's find first um, the two points that we're looking at. So 2004 to 2014, that's 10 years later. So our two um, x values, our t values, are 0 and 10. And then the y value at 0 is 10. And the y value at 10 is way up here at 40. So the average rate of change I'm just finding the slope between those two points. I'm going to have 40 minus 10 over 10 minus 0. So that's 30 over 10, which is 3. Let's look at the next part. In part B, they want us to interpret that average rate of change. So remember we found that the average rate of change was equal to 3. First let's look at our units. So remember we're, we're, our units for the average rate of change are going to be the units of P of T over the units of T. So the units of P of T is percent, and the units of T is years. So this is percent per year. OK, so we're supposed to write a sentence. And when we write the sentence, I'm asking you to try to write it in the format where first we have the when, then we have the what, then we have increasing or decreasing, and by how much. So the when. That's that 10-year period. So we would say between 2004 and 2014. OK, the what? So this graph is all about the home price index. So we would say the home price index Okay, next comes, is it increasing or decreasing? Since we have a positive average rate of change, we're talking about an increase. So we'd say, is increasing at an average rate of, so now we're looking at the by how much, so we're looking at 3% per year. So that's how we would interpret our average rate of change. OK, so now let's look at a problem where um, we're trying to decide what's happening to the instantaneous rate of change. So it says, over the interval 0 to 4, the instantaneous rate of change of the home price index is always increasing, always decreasing, increasing then decreasing, or decreasing then increasing. So because we're talking about the instantaneous rate of change, that means we're looking at the slope of that tangent line. 
So let's draw in some tangent lines. So we're going from 0 to 4. So at 0, our tangent maybe looks like that. Um, as we move towards 2, our tangent maybe looks like this. At 3, we have a horizontal tangent. And over here at 4, our tangent has a negative slope. So we are going from a positive slope to a zero slope at 3 to a negative slope. So if we start out with a positive number, we gradually decrease to zero and then go negative, that means that instantaneous rate of change is decreasing. So the answer here is always decreasing. Okay, so let's look at another one. So this time we're looking at the interval 5 to 8. Okay, so same question. What's happening to that instantaneous rate of change between 5 and 8? So here's 5, over here's 8. So our tangent line maybe looks like that at 5. Over here at 6, we're getting you know close to being horizontal. At 8, we've become positive. So we start out with a negative slope. We gradually move to a zero slope, and then we gradually move positive. So if you start out with a negative number, go up to zero, go positive, that means your those numbers are increasing. So our answer for part D here is always increasing. Okay, let's look at part E. So over the interval zero to eight, the instant radius, instantaneous rate of change in the home price index is always increasing, always decreasing, increasing, then decreasing, decreasing, then increasing. So we actually already answered a lot of this. We're looking at 0 to 8 this time. So we start out at 0. We've got a positive slope. As we move to the right, it becomes 0. As we keep moving, the slope gets negative. Then it becomes 0 again and then it becomes positive again. So we're starting out with a positive number, we're moving to zero, then we're moving to a negative number, then we're moving to zero, and we're moving back positive. So from here to here, we are decreasing, and then from here to here, we are increasing. So the answer for part E is decreasing, then increasing. Let's look at part F. So in part F, they're asking us to compare the average rate of change in the home price index over the interval 0 to 2. So this is asking us to compare the slope of that secant line between 0 and 2. So let's go ahead and draw that in. There's 0, there's 2, connect the dots, there's our secant line. So we're comparing that with the instantaneous rate of change in 2005. So the instantaneous rate of change in 2005, that is the slope of the tangent. Okay, so 2005, 0 here is 2004, so 2005 is right here. So I need to draw in that tangent there. So I'm trying to compare the slope of the green line with the slope of that pink line. And to me, they look like the slopes are about the same. So I think that the answer here is that they are approximately equal to each other. So now let's look at part G. So this time we're comparing the average rate of change in the home price index over 0 to 10. So again, this is the slope of that secant line. So we're going from 0 to 10 connect those dots, 
and I'm looking at this, comparing the slope of this pink line with the instantaneous rate of change in 2005. So again, we're looking at instantaneous rate of change in 2005. So that is the slope right here at t equals 1. Okay, so this they both have positive slope, and since this um, tangent line here is steeper than the secant line, the slope, the pink line has a smaller slope than the green line. So our answer here is that the average rate of change, the slope of the pink line, is less than the instantaneous rate of change, which is the slope of that tangent line, the green one. Okay, part H. So once again, we're comparing average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change. So this time, we're looking at the average rate of change over the intervals 3 to 8. So slope of that secant. So 3, here's 3, here's 8. So this time, my line has a negative slope. And I'm comparing that with the instantaneous rate of change in 2009. So here's 2010 at 6, so 2009 is right here at 5. So instantaneous rate of change, so that means I'm looking at the slope of the tangent. Okay, so draw in my tangent line. Okay, now, both of these lines have negative slope. And so when you're trying to compare negative slopes, it's a little bit more challenging. So we're trying to figure out how the average rate of change compares with the instantaneous rate of change. And so we've got to figure out, do we put in a less than, a greater than, or approximately equal to in between those two? Okay, so since um, when you have negative lines, ne slopes that have are negative, the one that is steeper is more negative. So for instance, if this line had slope... Um, I mean, we could estimate it, but I'm going to pull a number out of a hat here. So if the slope of this were, say, negative 10, then the slope of the green line would be something more like negative 20. So if we were going to put a, um, an inequality between those two, I would have to say that the negative 10 is bigger than the negative 20. And again, I pulled these numbers out of thin air these aren't the actual slopes. I'm just using them to compare what happens with um, when we have neg two negative slopes. So our answer here is that the average rate of change is bigger than the instantaneous rate of change. So we're going to put A for greater than. Okay, now in this last one, we have a whole bunch of different um, sentences here, and we have to pick which one we're talking about. So in each, okay, so let's, let's re read this first. So which of the following is correct? Over the period 0 to 3. So we're only looking at this range here. So we're just focused on this section of our graph. Okay, so we have two parts to each of these sentences that we're trying to pick from. One part says the rate of change in the home price index either increased or decreased. And then the blue part says the home price in index increased or decreased. So let's figure out what they mean by that rate of change increased or decreased. We actually answered this before. But the green part, they're talking about the slope of that tangent. 
Okay, so if we draw in tangents here, so we start out with a positive slope. And then as we move towards the right, towards 3, we gradually go towards 0. So if we start out with something positive and we move towards 0, that means that um, that value is decreasing. So I can rule out a few of my answers here. So the rate of change in the home price index is actually decreasing. So it can't be A, it can't be B. So it either has to be C or D. Okay, so now let's look at the second part of the sentence. It says the home price index decreased or the home price index increased. So this is actually looking at just what is our function doing. So we're actually looking at the y values. So if we start out here at um, 0, we're at a y value of 10, and then as we go towards 3, we're up at 40, that means those that home price index decreases, or I'm sorry, that home price index increased. See how the numbers, the y values are getting bigger. So it can't be C because we actually need increased. So our correct answer is answer D. So that's it for this video.